What I want to talk to you about is putting. This happens to be one of my favorite subjects to talk about. And one of the reasons why is because you all, how many people, raise your hand if you're a golf professional. Just raise your hand if you're a golf professional. Okay. So as golf professionals, we don't really do a lot of instruction in the putting space. The, the statistics are pretty bad. And amateurs, as a rule, are only taking one putting lesson every four years. One putting lesson every four years. And part of that is our fault as golf professionals. We're not getting them out to take a lesson and explain to them how to become a better putter. Second thing is, in large part, we don't really understand a lot that what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you how I'm using the foresight to assist in the instruction space and realize, please, that this information has just come out. We've been working on this now for, I don't know, where'd Grant go? How long have we been working on this? We've been working on this for three weeks, so, maybe two months. Maybe months. So, so this is fairly new in, in, in the information that we're going to have. And as we go through this, if you have questions about what we've talked about, please feel free to ask them. Does everybody get, the, get that? OK. So here's what I'm trying to do when I'm, when I'm teaching my students, whether they're touring professionals or rank beginners, the ball doesn't know who's hitting it. Does everybody get that? The ball responds to what happens at that one moment of impact. And all the information is programmed into the ball and then the ball adjusts accordingly. Does everybody understand? And so here's what I want to have happen. Well, let me ask. What do you think you want to have happen in order to make a ball roll properly? What needs to happen in order for a ball to roll properly? Yeah. Center impact. Center impact on what? So we want to hit it in the center of the club face. Now the club face has a, a number of centers, right? It has a center left to right and it has a center up, up and down. So when we say center, are we talking center, center? Are we talking center left to right? Or are we talking center up and down? Center up and down. Center up and down. And how about left to right? Where do you want to hit it? In the center of the cavity. You want to hit it in the center of the cavity. But a lot of times the center of the cavity isn't in the center of the putter head. So you got to make sure that you're paying attention to that. I actually prefer my elite students to make contact with the, with the putter high on the putter head, above the, the horizontal line of the putter head. So if you drew a line right through the center of the putter face, I want that impact point to be just above that, more towards the crown. All right? And so what happens is, is that and I'll see if I can get this for you. Good? Okay, so when I hit this, now there'll be information that's going to come up onto the, the screen and make sure everybody can see the, the impact. You all can see it right here. You see that club face with the dot? See how that dot is high on that putter face? And now you look, that's terrific. So here's the impact point right there. So that, that to me, that's what I'm looking for. What happens if I hit it low on the putter head? What do you imagine would happen to the golf ball if I hit it low on the putter head? It's going to increase the spin. It's going to launch the thing up into the air. And if I hit it low on the ball and low on the putter head, now we have a real problem. OK? So here's a little bit of a low, that's a low, low. Now what you'll see when, you, when these numbers come up is you're going to see the speed of the ball change. Look at that golf ball. Can you pause that frame? Yes, I can. Look at what the ball did. So can everybody see what the ball did? What does it appear that the ball did? It went up into the air. What also happened? It rolled with backspin. Why is backspin a bad thing in putting? It slows it down. Thank you, Doug. That guy knows what he's talking about. So it slows it down. What happens if you slow the ball down? You lose distance control. What's the most important thing in putting? Speed, pace. Everybody understand? OK, so when you get too low, it's bad. What we want is two highs. We want high on the ball, and we want high on the putter head. 
Now the speed of that, of that, the speed of the putter head on that was about six miles an hour. The speed of the golf ball was 3.6. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to get a little bit of a high contact in both of these areas. By the way, did you all see how that ball just appeared to keep rolling and rolling? It didn't just stop like it was moving into Velcro. What it did was it continued to move. So the launch, so it did get that one. Yep. So that, so, so I reduced the speed of the putter head by basically a half a mile an hour. It went from six miles an hour to 5.5. The ball went farther and the ball speed went to about 3.6. Can you pull up that one screen that showed the, the rotation of the ball? It didn't trap on that one, but the, it did the time before. It didn't get it? Yeah. Okay. It, the, the okay, so we'll do it again. Yeah. Tell me when you're ready for me. So one of the things that happens is, is that we have a Wi-Fi connection that's going to this screen here. So you're getting what you would normally get if you had an iPad or some sort of a device to assist you with seeing this and you weren't looking at the, at the quad. But basically what happens is, is that you will, you will reduce the putter head speed and increase the ball speed as you start to hit high on the putter and high on the ball. Should be good? Should be good. So we'll see if we can do that again. Okay, so that one was a little bit of a toe hit that I hit there. But if you show the ball on that, so here you go. So here's the ball itself. If you all can see that ball right there. So zero launch, spin rate, dead forward, exactly the way I want. And the, and the, the, the speed went down to 5.2. That's, that's exactly what I did. So I knew I hit it out on the toe. By the way, if anybody has any questions, don't be afraid to ask them whenever you get them. Okay, so what was the skid distance? So here's the question. The question was, what was the skid dis distance? Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a pain in the butt. That's not the way I, it's not the way I am. But I want to know, when I do something, why I need to know something. So here's the question. Can anybody tell me the value of skid distance? What's that? Keeps the ball on line better. The, the way the ball skids? Do you want more or less skid? There's going to be, so here's the thing. So we don't, we're golf pros, we don't know. Skid basically is when the ball is not in true roll. There's going to be an effect on skid. What controls skid? The surface. Are the greens long or are they short? What also controls skid? If I'm going uphill or downhill. The distance of the putt. So candidly, and I mean this, I don't care about skid. I don't. Because skid is going to vary. So it's, it's a good question. The only thing, let me just finish the thought. The only thing that I care about skid is that it's the same. So if I stand here and I'm working on this and I'm hitting this putt, I want the same skid every single time. That's telling me that my impact point's the same every time. And that's the value of it. But what the number is, I couldn't care less about. Because there's too many variables. I just was worried about asking the question, when do we adjust the loft of the putter? To get the so, so the question is, well, when do you adjust the loft of the putter? Right? All right, first of all, who knows absolutely, without a question of a doubt, what their loft is on their putter? What's the loft on your putter? Three, three, degrees. three degrees. Now, how do you know that? That's the way I ordered it. That's the way you ordered it. Okay, now, have you ever ordered something and didn't get what you ordered? <laughs> right, it's laughable. How do you know what the loft on your putter is? Measure it. You measure it. Now, raise your hand if you've ever measured the loft on your putter. Everybody look around. There's about 12 people. They're all pros. 
They've all, th that's exactly right. So Doug, what's the loft on your putter? One degree. God, he's a smart guy. Why do you want loft on a putter? Somebody answer the question to me. Why do you want loft on a putter? No, 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 I, you, you spent much, too much time with my academy. You know the answer. Why do you want loft on a putter? To roll? To true roll. Top spin. So if I get, if I get, which spins more, a wedge or a four iron? Wedge, which has more loft? Wedge. So does it make sense that if I added more loft, I would get more top spin? No, but that's what you've been told. Right, so I'm gonna tell you all a story. This is how I live my life. Greg knows this story. This is the way I live my life. This guy gets married to a woman and she cooks him ham for Christmas. He gets married in November, first Christmas shows up and the ham comes out, it's the best ham he's ever had in his life. But it shows up and both ends of the ham are cut off. So he eats the ham, happy husband, and as the right husband, he goes, sweetheart, what does he say? It's the greatest ham I've ever had in my life. That's what he says. But I have a question for you. Why do you cut the ends off the ham? And his wife says, well, that's the way you cook ham. That's the way my mother cooked ham. So New Year shows up. He goes up and he says to his new mother-in-law, I had the best ham I've ever had. Your daughter cooked it for me. It was phenomenal. But she cut the ends off the ham. She said, that's the way you cut ham. That's the way you cook ham. She goes, it is. That's the way you cook ham. I cut the ends off the ham. That's how you do it. And he, and he goes, well, why do you do that? And she goes, well, that's the way you cook ham. That's the way my mother cooked ham. So now he has to go to the grandmother. So he goes to the grandmother and he says, Grandma, and I'm giving you guys the monarch notes. You can take this story and embellish it however you want to embellish it, okay? He says, Grandma, wh why do you cut the ends off the ham? She says, well, come in the kitchen. You see my stove here? If I don't cut the ends off the ham, I can't put it in the stove. <laughs> now, why do we have loft on a putter? Because we've always had loft on a putter. So here's your history. The reason why we have loft on a putter is, first of all, before there was a 14 club rule, there were two types of putters. There was a long putter and a short putter. And back long, long, long time ago, remember when you used to have to tee your ball up within two club lengths of the hole that you just played, no nearer the hole. What do you imagine the area looked like around the hole? Kind of a mess, pretty much full of sand, not a lot of grass. And so what players wanted to do was they wanted their ball to bounce and then start rolling as it got close to the hole because that would hit less perfect imperfections in the ground. That's why we have loft on a putter. Now, here's the logic. Do I have a pool shark in here? Give me a pool shark. Pool shark. Okay, it's even better. What's your name? Chris, it's even better. Chris is the guy who says, I want loft. It's gonna make me roll better. Now, but he's a pool shark. So when I wanna put backspin on that ball, if I've got a horizontal line, and a vertical line going right through the center of the cue ball, where do I want to impact that ball in order to put backspin on the putter? Below it. Does anybody want to argue with Chris? Anybody want to take Chris onto a pool table? No? Okay, now if I want to put top spin on the ball, I want to get that ball to move forward right away, where are we going to impact? Above the equator. On the vertical line above the equator. Does anybody want to argue with Chris again, my new best friend? No? Okay, now. If I'm doing that, what do I also want to do with the cue stick? Do I want the cue stick to be going down, level, or slightly up? Slightly up. But he's not sure about slightly up. Are you? You're slightly up. Okay, so slightly up. Anybody want to argue with Chris again? So what we want to do is we want to create an impact point that is above the equator, on the vertical line, with a what's called line of action. That's a technical term. Line of action moving in an upward direction. You call it rise angle. On tour, somewhere between two to four degrees of a rise angle to get the ball to tumble exactly the way we want it to tumble. Does everybody understand that? That's what's in this thing. So when I go through this, I can track what my face is doing, what my impact point's doing, what the ball's doing, what my line of action is doing, it will give me skid numbers, even though all I'm doing is looking at it, measuring it from putt to putt to putt. Not that there's a perfect thing. It'll also give me a smash factor. 
Who knows what the ideal smash factor is when you're putting? Who, who knows it? No, but it's close. It's close to one, but I'm, but I'm all about you. It's about 1.5. Between, say, 1.5 and 1.7 is an ideal smash factor. So when you're sitting here and you're putting, I'm going to take this out and put it back in again. So what I'm looking at, who knows what smash factor is? What's smash factor, by the way? Okay, good. Just want to make sure I knew my audience. All right, so when I'm coming into this putt, what I'm trying to do is I'm, think, I'm only thinking about my impact point and my rise angle. That's all I'm thinking about. I don't want to change any of that. So come through, rise angle. Now let's look at what our numbers are. So, so first of all, that ball, so that one had a little bit of a forward rotation to it. Do it again. Go to the next one. So the impact point is high on the face, and the impact point, which will be coming, is good. We'll, we'll show you what's happened, but my efficiency is 156. So in effect, what's happening is, is that I'm improving my impact, I'm improving my smash factor by focusing on making sure that my impact point on the ball is high on the ball, high on the face with a path going up like that. It's a pretty simple thing. What would change the impact point or the impact location on the ball and on the face? What would, what would make it change? What are some of the things that would make it change? The loft of the putter, that would absolutely do it. And we control loft. We control loft. Forward press. That forward press. So here's what you need to understand. I don't care about loft. I spoke to a guy, I do a lot of research on putting with a guy who's far smarter than I am, which is one of the things that you want to do. If you want to be smart, find a guy who's smarter and then just shut up and listen, and they'll make you smart, but you got to listen. This guy said, Michael, when you take a round object and, you, and it meets a flat object, all you have is an impact point. That's all you have. It's not a smush, it's an impact point. So all I do when I putt, how you doing? So all I do when I putt is I'm just concerning myself with the impact point and its location on the putter head and its location on the, on the uh, golf ball. And that impact point around that T is all I'm concerning myself with. I was up on the, on the attack angle 1-6. Okay. Anybody have any questions yet? No questions. Can you tell them your research on your, uh, on your 10 putters with different loss? We don't have enough time to get into that that's one, but story. you know that stuff. That's yep. So here's the, here's the next putt that I just hit. Okay. So the next putt that I just hit again, and if you're looking down here, one of the things, you see these two bottom numbers here, it'll tell you a launch number and it will tell you a, a different number. Those numbers, I'm really looking at the letters. Both of them say F on them. It'll come back around. See the two F's right there? That means forward. Now, if I, if I am working with a student that has anything other than an F, I got to work, I got to work differently. F's are good in my, in my book. So when I hit that one, that one's going to, you're going to see on the, that screen, it'll jump up into the air. That one didn't pick up. Didn't pick up? But it is there, right? No, it didn't pick up. Okay, so same thing here. So I'm going to put the shaft backwards. When I put the shaft backwards, what am I doing in effect? I'm increasing loft, which is going to lower the contact point, right? So I'm going to go like this. That ball is going to jump up into the air. So do you see the B, 175B? I don't want any B. I want Fs. And that tells me that the putter face has had loft on it. That tells me that the shaft at some point was released early, whether I set it there or I returned there, that's when I got into problems and that's how I got that B. And if you look at the impact point there, you can see how low that is on the putter head. Yeah, there you go, right there. So you can see that right there, how low that is on the putter head. That's almost right around the bottom of the... And did you show the, the ball, the movement of the ball on that one?
Yeah, so you can see how that's going up into the air and rotating backwards. Okay? Now, well, anybody have any questions yet? Michael. Yeah. Path can affect loft, absolutely. So in putting, I'm, I'm way more concerned with face than path, but if I take the path and I have the path cutting across, and I need to, if, if I need to get the ball to start on my line, and my path is going in this direction here, I've got to get my face to open up to the path. And when I open up the face to the path, it's going to increase loft. I'm either going to do that by slowing the handle or twisting the shaft. Either way, that's going to change the impact point and fire that thing up into the air. Okay? Good question. Anybody else? Yeah. Is it, so you talked about cue ball, you know, drawing a yep. T in the cue ball. Is it safe to assume for golfers that if you took that same T and put it on the face of your putter, that's the center? The center of the putter? Yeah. Okay, so the question is if you put a T on the putter head, is that the center of, of the putter? The answer is no. And the reason why is because there's mass and weight and all kinds of different things that are happening in here. So if I took and put a lot of weight on the top line right there, that would then take that tee and I could move it down, right? So where you would want to hit that thing relative to that, that's why I just go, if you ever get a really good putter, go to Ben Crenshaw's bag if you're fortunate enough and just, just see if you can look at the face and you'll see a wear out spot high on the putter and you may also see there are some that are that wear it out a little high and towards the toe. Bad putters are making contact towards the heel and why do they make bad contact towards the heel? What happens when you open up the putter face? You, you start taking the heel and getting it to get to the target before the toe. Okay? Very, very good question. Anybody else have a question? No? Okay, so what I'm looking at when I'm doing this is I'm focusing on primarily those things. The impact point, what's happening with this, and then I want consistency in my skid. I'm looking for consistency. I'm looking for consistency in my ball speed. I'm looking for consistency in, in uh, the putter head speed. And that consistency doesn't mean if I have this putt here that's say, let's just say that's nine feet. If I go somewhere else on a faster surface or whatever, I might get a slower ball speed, a slower putter head speed. There's no cup there, by the way. So there again, a bunch of Fs, which is what I want to see. And there again is the, the spin of the ball. Okay. So here's what I can tell you relative to this, and, and you will get a chance to spend time on this at probably in the summertime, but here's what I can tell you. We've worked really hard at creating something that when, as a coach, you put it out there, you get all the information that, that is pertinent to you that's going to help your students improve. One of the things that's also happening is if you're an amateur and you're so inclined to do this, what this device will do, it's a complete instructional device. It's going to help you with your full swing, it's going to help you with your wedges, it's going to help you with your putting, it's going to help you focus on what you need to focus on and particularly when it comes to this it's all about impact points. Okay? If, if there's no other questions I want to wish everybody a great year. I want to thank you so much for coming out and spending time. We'll be doing some other stuff. Scott, how are you? Good to see you. I couldn't be better. How about you? Good. So I want to thank everybody. I hope everybody has a great year. We'll be doing some more stuff over at the booth uh, during the course of the, the week, okay? Thank, yes, sir. When you're working with students, do you look at Smash Factor? I do not look at Smash Factor when I'm, looking at, when I'm working with students. Smash Factor is one of those things to me that it has an importance, but basically all it is is it's a number based on another number, based on another number. So. I'm not so concerned with smash factor as much as I'm concerned with the consistency of it. If I want to be able to control speed, what I have to do is I have to impact the ball in generally the same position, impact the putter in generally the same position, have a, a very similar rise angle to what I'm doing with that stroke, right? So those are the things to me that are going to create consistency and speed and all I want my students to do is have consistency and speed, okay? Anybody else? No? Good?
All righty, thank you all so much. Thanks for coming out. Thank you.